All right, so can you guys hear me? Yes, no, maybe so. All right, good. So now you guys see me up close with no makeup on and hair up and a big mess. Yeah, the real sexy hair. But I'm telling you, I was blown away when I found that. I, I wanted to use OBS in order to um to show you guys where I found it. But I was, like, shocked. I have never heard ever that Kasorik was the one that killed Hasselhutter, ever. And I was like, whoa, that's what took me, like, so long to do the video. Because I was, like, stuck on finding this information. Um, so there's 21 people and there's one thumb up. Come on, guys. Really? Hey, fun. Hey, Jerome. So you guys missed all my videos. There you go. <laughs> I just jumped. <laughs> so for those of you that, what, that didn't just see my last video, did you guys see my last video? Like Jerome, fun. I know Ben saw it. I know some people saw it. All up and then hizzy. I'm telling you, it's fucked up. I did not know that. And I have never heard that before. I'm like, you know what? I really hope nobody else has heard this. So I don't look like, you know, I'm like, yeah, we all knew that. So I'm glad like nobody realized it. Stacy, I actually wasn't going to go live. Everyone told me, oh, go live now. So I did. <laughs> Zachary, in my last video, um, if, if you are familiar with Ricky Hosletter case, um, it's always been rumored that it was Herman or Tom Herman's brother, or I think his name's Tom, but uh, Herman's brother. And I actually found evidence that it wasn't the brother. It was actually Kosorik that killed Hosletter. Can you resume, Laura? What do you mean? Can I resume what? The video? I just told you what the main part of the video was. <sighs> so, yeah, that was like a major, major bomb drop. I had no clue that he was even thinking of it. Um, Wrecking Crew is really good. And I'm also going to ask John Farrick about it because he didn't say anything about Kosorik either. Hey, Heather. So what I did in the premiere video was I just simply, I was going to do uh, Kaczynski's trial and then got sidetracked when I saw that about Kasorik. So what I decided to do was um, part one and just do like a timeline and a background of the of what led Kaczynski to where he is and the power and the powers that be. Um, I did that now and then tomorrow I'm going to do the actual trial. But I feel like for everyone that's new, they may not know the background of Manitowoc and they may not know the background of um, Kazorik. Pat Riley reference is dope. Dude, when I was growing up, Pat Riley was like the bomb. Like every girl wanted him. Every guy wanted to be him. Um, and then he went to, and that was when he was on the Knicks. Then when he went to Lakers, it was no different. Like Pat Riley was the bomb. The bomb drop was that you have to watch the other video, <clears throat> but the real bomb drop is that Kasorik is the one that killed Hotsletter, not uh, Herman. Um, Ben, everybody wanted something of Pat Riley, no doubt. Lots of reading. Yeah, it is lots of reading. And that's why I know a lot of people, especially ones that are new to MAM2, are not going to do the research that we did and are not going to find things that we did. That's why I put everything in a timeline tonight. And I did a pre cursor to Lenkachinsky's trial and really what brought him where he is today. 
John points out so much corruption in Manitowoc. He does a lot more than I ever thought. That's why I'm going to ask him about what I found tonight. Because, like I said, I have never heard that mentioned anywhere, but it makes perfect sense with with uh, Kasora covering up everything. Um, and translate it for you. Well, Jerome, can't you do the audio and translate it? Um... I'm lost. Uh, all right. So I was answering someone. Um, Karen, do they have it now? They didn't when I had looked. Watching the last video. Go watch it, Linda. Um, James, I think every store has it. But if you're like a busy person, I would recommend doing the um, audible version. I really enjoy the audible version. Um, that's why you do the audio. I think audible is free if you have Kindle, um, Kindle, uh, a Kindle subscription, or you can do like a. Uh, 30 day free trial. I believe he still gets paid anyway. Um, I haven't read Atwood's book. You're welcome, Jerome. Um, no stores in the UK had it. There you go, John. Now you found it. Ken Kratz's book is such a joke. I read it. I read half of it. I couldn't even get through it. I was like, this is such a nightmare. Um, absolutely total nightmare. It, it's just full of so many lies. I bought, I did the, um, Kindle audio version, audible version. Like Kindle, you get free with Amazon prime. Um, it's good for starting a fire. It's good to see the lies. I mean, I really, I'm dumbfounded the lies this man tells. Um, hold on. I'll be right back. I got to get a drink. I've like the worst cotton mouth in the world. You guys got to see uh, fluffing out his new pajamas. If he ever comes out of his bed, he looks so cute. His chapter in Ferrick's book. I know. I heard that on Audible. I was like, oh, my God. Aren't they cute, Ethel? The guy is sick. There's no doubt about it. Personally, I think he's beyond sick. I'm going to do a video on him, too. Like, dedicate a whole video to Ken Kratz in that chapter and everything in that chapter. All right. For the third time, for the 30th time, the bomb drop is everybody thinks that the rumors have gone on for years that it was Herman who or Herman's brother that killed Ricky Hosletter. I found evidence tonight through something that it was Kasorik that actually killed him. And Kasorik's sister's husband, his sister's dead, but the husband confirms that Tom Kasorik is the one that ran over Ricky Hasletter. That's the bomb drop. Give me a boo. Loving out his jammies. <laughs> his arm keeps coming out. 
Tom Kasorg is just pencil. No, that's Kush. Um, John, Tom Kasorg is the puppet master. I have an EQ, but his arm fell out. How can dogs get more pockets? I'm telling you, they have a pocket right here. It's the dumbest thing I ever saw. What are they going to carry? Dog bones? Kush, John, that was it. Um, Kush was the one with the skin tabs on his fat neck. Yeah, Kush is the artist, but he's not the puppet master. The puppet master was Kasorik. And it makes perfect sense that Kasorik is the one that killed Hosletter because he was in charge of all the investigations and told everybody, no, 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 don't investigate. Let's lead down the wrong path. And he did pass away. You're going to see Fluffin' out to bite me trying to get his arm back in here. Come on. There he goes, get mad. Stop it. See, Marissa, now you can see how he bites me. Trying to get his arm in. And he hit the teen kid on the snowy, yes. 50 yards from his house. So the mom woke up and looked outside and saw her son was dead. Hey, Rachel. Trying to get Fluffy Nutter's arm back in his pajamas. Um, even Kosorik was enraged against Steven. Kosorik was the main reason that he filed the lawsuit. Kosorik was the head of it. Kosorik is involved in so many, so much corruption and so many cover-ups. It's insane. Stop. Um, but I'm telling you, Kasorik was the puppet master. There are a bunch of hypocrites, but everybody did everything for Kasorik. Was it Kasorik the one who got gas in his car? No, that was Bushman, I believe. Kasorik told Bushman. Yeah, that was Bushman. What's up, who's your daddy? I haven't seen you in a while. Does the hamster look like Terry Hobbs from West Memphis 3? I haven't seen him lately. <laughs> so exactly. Not convenient. Like it was the same day. The day after um, Avery gets arrested. Stop biting. You got your arm fixed. <laughs> He's getting mad. Stop. Oh, good. I'm walking around with one arm out. Ah. He does get mad. He hates it. I'm going to have to take it off because his arm is going to hurt his arm. Oof. All right, Alfred's got to come off. Um, first time enjoying your ch first time enjoying my channel. Or first time seeing my channel. Um, yeah, he hates wearing clothes. He hated it when he was a month old. All right, now you're naked. For all those that are new, this is Fluff and Nutter Butter. <laughs> Who's mad? Aw. He needs a haircut. Um, so, see, Sully, I'm glad that you're here. And there's Puppy Q. And his puppy is a little nightmare. He needs a bath and a haircut. He won't let me do anything. What? What? And it's freezing out. And it doesn't want to wear clothes. 
Say bye bye. Say bye bye. <laughs> Here's your Papa's anal gland. John, you're nasty. That's why I have fluff and nutter butter. John's gross. Need some puppy cuteness to have an emotional iracose. <laughs> I thank you, Jerome. So, Michael Kelly, I can't wait. What an ass. Oh, my. Oh, Michael Kelly. Oh, my God. I know. Um, There's not much to say about him, really, other than there was like this big conspiracy where Len. Um, tried to, and I just read this tonight. I like refreshed it with all the notes that I've had in the past. But when Kaczynski went down, Michael Kelly and Kaczynski together got like $20,000 for representing Brendan. And O'Kelly was paid almost $6,000. And Ken was trying to, uh, Len was trying to say, you know, oh, he didn't deserve it. And he didn't listen to me. But meanwhile, there were fucking tons of emails to prove otherwise. There were like so many emails to say, um, no, this was communication that went back and forth. This was not one-sided. Kent, uh, Len knew exactly what was going on. And it absolutely dumbfounds me that he was reelected again. He had to be reelected because he's still a judge today or he was a judge up until recently. Um... Seems like they hit someone with a car, set someone up, and they advanced the ladder of Ellie. It's exactly right. So killing someone on purpose couldn't be ruled out. Um, no, because I don't think Ricky was killed on purpose either. It was a pure accident. I got a new candle tonight. I lit it. it smells like burnt nose hairs. Ew. Um... But that, but fun, that's exactly what happens. And that's what uh, Ferrex book said. And that's the research I found is that, you know what? That's so true that as soon as if, if you cover up for Kasorik or Peterson, when Peterson's at the top or Herman, when Herman was at the top, if you cover for them, you're golden. You're going to get uh, escalated. It's crazy. Um, what are my thoughts about the new motion on the 20th? Rachel, I might be wrong, but I don't think I am. I am 99.9% .9 positive that I'm correct on this. The 20th is an appeal for her to get a, her evidentiary hearing. It's not an appeal like for Steven. I mean, it is obviously, but it's about the evidentiary hearing. It's, it's has nothing to do with like Steven's not going to walk. From what I believe, I haven't confirmed this with anybody. I'm not in any family room. I have no idea if I'm right, but I'm knowing the law. I'm pretty confident that I'm correct. She's appealing that judge wouldn't give her an evidentiary hearing. That's all this appeal is about. So she has to file a motion for the 20th to prove why she deserves an evidentiary hearing through the Supreme Court. I mean, through the appeals court. That's what I think is happening on the 20th. Kelly Gumbrand, uh, smell candles the same way. It's only because they want to keep scurvy working. You know, keep them in and there. If you cover them, they figure you'd be one of them and good to go. It just runs on. And I agree with that, Linda. That is pretty much the way it goes that they have to. But it, it's it's not even like covering each other it's you have to cover the top the top cannot fall i don't know why but like remaker i didn't know remaker was related to kasorik i don't care if it's if he's a fourth cousin or related by marriage kasorik is a puppet master no like the godfather he's not gonna go against him nobody's gonna go against the godfather nobody um I know it was an accident happened to Morris. So that says a lot about their character. Absolutely. They are rewarded for bad behavior. Why not kill? They get what they want. It's been working for them. <clears throat> the reason why I don't think they killed her, it, it's just, I don't know. I can't say no. 
But I think it, there were enough people that are dead in that county that they could have made it a coincidence. And honestly, I think they just got really lucky. Um, I don't think it's in a, I don't think in a big plot, just a couple of persons with good relationship with law enforcement can do all that. Um, yeah, Jerome, but the, what you're, what's, you may not understand, John, I can't watch it now. What I can understand is if you have Kasorik, okay, Kasorik's a puppet master, he's going to tell whoever is his next or who's going to do for him to be in charge of that. Hence, why Bushman was called out of retirement from Kasorik or Peterson or Herman to be the lead investigator on a case of Stephen Avery. That there's no logic in that. The guy was retired and he took no notes while he was there. That's that's not normal. Like you just don't do that. Yes, Patty, I'm live now. They suckered me into going live. Um what's wow? I know because I look like shit with no makeup on. I'm still in my jammies. I threw my hair up. I was going to say, you gone or still in Florida? It's cold in New York, I'll tell you that much. So you're flying back to coldness. Um, my little sister just bought a house in Wisconsin. I'm going to miss her. Aww. Had a sight on so Patty. P-A-T-T-I. Because she's one of my besties. Um, so now she's blaming us for what would be a three-hour session. <laughs> no three-hour session today. I got to work at seven in the morning. Patty, can I tell them what your brother does? <laughs> um, LOL, just because I don't want to really... What part of... Uh, Thank you, Hoosier. I'm not even showered. So, shh. Uh, when did Bushman retire? I'm not sure when he retired, but I know he retired before the Stephen Avery craze. As a matter of fact, you know what? 2005, I believe he retired, if I'm not mistaken. Thanks, Linda. Thanks, Hoosier. Hoosier, this nose ring actually has special meaning. A um, friend of mine from high school that I was very close with, um, like rehooked up in 2010, and his best friend was learning how to pierce. He was working at a tattoo parlor in New York. I went to New York to see them, and I got my nose pierced. And then, like six months later, he was killed, and then my friend was killed. So I decided to keep it in as memory of both of them. That's why I don't take it out. I'll probably never take it out. Um, yeah, I think Bushman retired in, I want to say 2004 or 2005. I did hear that, that the KZ was granted permission to test Carmen's bones. But Carmen was cremated, so I don't get what bones she's testing. I mean, can you test ashes? I mean, that's what I don't get about testing Carmen's bones. Carmen was cremated. That's that's fact. My dog was cremated, and I found teeth in the cremains. Okay. <coughs> that's possible. And I had it done at the human cremation place. <laughs> But I'm just saying, everyone's talking about uh, that KZ got permission, but it, there are no bones. According to brother, she's she's a pile of ashes. I'm trying to figure that out, Jerome. I've asked a bunch of people. Um, I haven't gotten any calls back yet. Haven't gotten any returns back yet. I'm going to have Marty help me get some interviews. He's got connections. 
Um, I just watched MAM2 and missed this before. TH was briefly buried before burnt. Brian, I don't know who Rubber Ducky is. Someone mentioned them last night. Um, all that sad story, but that's a nice memory. It is. Because you make a great interview. Thanks, Jerome. I really enjoy doing it. I just... I got to find the people that are willing to do it that will do it for free because I don't have money to pay anyone. Subscribe and click the bell. Thanks, C. Sully. C. C. Sully, if you didn't know this live stuff, we've gone like six and a half hours last night. Like some people do like an hour or two. Somehow I get sucked into doing like three, four, five hours. I don't even know how. Um, there are bone fragments and creations. Okay. Um, Brian, like what kind of stuff? I think I mentioned this last night, um, but I'm not sure that uh, just in case you guys didn't know that Chris Watts is now the same place as Brian as uh, Brandon is. I think I said that last night, but just in case I didn't. Um, check my text. My phone's about to die. Oh, get the fuck out of here. Seriously? She's back. <clears throat> um, thank you, Lorraine. So what's a bomb shock here? You have to watch the video I posted a half hour ago. But because I'm in a good mood, Reno, I'll tell you again. For many, many years, it has always been said that Kasor, I mean, that Tom Herman or his brother is the one that killed Ricky Hosletter. Hosletter. In doing some research tonight on something unrelated, I found proof that, or evidence, or possible evidence, or possible proof that, um. And it has been confirmed by her brother that Kasorik is the one that actually ran over Ricky, that it wasn't Herman. And I've never heard this before. I did some research tonight. And Kay, who's his sister, her, she's now dead, but her husband has confirmed that they went to speak to Tom and Kay went to speak to Tom about it because it wasn't right that he was covering it up. So I'm going to dig more into it. I know I tell you guys I'm going to dig more into stuff and I slack out, but I really am digging more into this because I didn't dig too much into it tonight because I was afraid, like, because I didn't follow the Hostler case, like, I would be the only one that didn't know and you guys would be like, duh. So I decided to kind of hold back on a little, but now I know that nobody knew and now I feel better. So now I'll dig more into it. Um... She pretty good, but she don't rock like you. Who, Rubber Ducky? I just found out who Rubber Ducky is. I have no interest. Um, KD? Rubber Ducky is not KD or KZ or anybody. I can't say who Rubber Ducky is, but trust me. Woohoo! That's all I'm going to say on the matter. Um... Watch the old Dateline again earlier, and KK and SA answered the door in a towel that day, and TH co-workers once tied up in the bed. Um, yeah, no, that, that whole story from Ken Kratz is ludicrous and totally not true. Um... Uh, yeah, Brian, who's KD? But I can assure you, she is a fucking lunatic. And I do not speak bad about other YouTubers, but I know her from two years ago. She's a fucking lunatic. Um, who do you think will? She's not Kim Ducat, she's not related to Steven, she doesn't know Steven. She, she's literally bona fide crazy. Um, who do you think will eventually cave for leniency? Shweezy, I don't think anyone's going to cave. 
they haven't caved by now, they're never caving. Um, let's see. Um, oh, Chickly, you're new too? Thanks. Sounds like I said sorry. No, Brian, you don't have to apologize. I, I'll i tell you privately, because I honestly, I don't want to bash anybody, but trust me when I tell you she's bonafide crazy. I didn't speak to her for like two years. I'm about, what was it? Uh, what, what month? Are we? Yeah, about two months ago, I get a text from her um, on my phone about Halloween, and it's I can't even get into it now, but she's crazy. I'll leave it at that. Um, Lorraine, her, if the, you should watch if she still had her channel from two, two years ago, way out there, like, who like Martians took Teresa. I, I actually think she once said that she was under a different name, but I actually think she once said that, that aliens took Teresa. She's way out there. Um, Yeah, but the problem with her information, and again, I someone just told me who she actually was. The problem with her information is it's made up off the top of her head. Um, she 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 just spins things. She, we used to call her Spin Master. She just spins things. It's uh, um. See, so KD is Steven's cousin. If you watched Making a Murderer one or two, or especially in one, she was the older lady um, saying how she always knew he was innocent. That's who Kim uh, Duvac Ducat is. Um. Marissa, I'll tell you all about her after. But yeah, I mean, you guys watch her. If you guys like her, go watch her. I'm not telling you not to. Um, just don't bring me any of her theories because they're whacked. Um, you're welcome, Sully. The brief burial would suggest to me someone who didn't live nearby or live with their parents couldn't hide the body near their home. Watch the pushing up daisies. It's quite odd. Watch the pushing up daisies. What's that? Oh, is that like the name of her video or something? Pushing up daisies? I don't know. I didn't even know she was back. Last I knew she was, she retired from MAM. She was not dealing with it at all. And I, I don't even think I can handle one of her videos. Um, see, the thing is though, and what, whether it be her, cause this, I don't know her new stuff, but I know her from two years ago. And one of my pet peeves in life is, um, oh my God. Uh, I don't know how to say it. Um, not coincidences. Uh, What's that called when you get like convicted of something and I can't think of the word you're convicted, but it's not based on evidence. It's based on circumstances, circumstantial evidence. I have a big problem with circumstantial evidence and because you can create, you can take something and create an entire situation out of it and make it make sense. And there are people that do that. She was one of them where she would take an actual piece of evidence and spin and spin and spin and spin an entire story around it. So yeah, it made sense, but it was based on nothing. It was just convoluted bullshit. And a lot of people do that. Ju people get convicted on that. People spread rumors on that. People, you know, accuse people based on that. So even though circumstantial evidence is legal, I personally have a big problem with it. Um, 
Is that what KK did? No, Ken Kratz is just spin doctor. He didn't do, he didn't base it on anything but his own fantasies. Sounds like she's susceptible to confirmation bias. I don't, I don't know. I don't know her anymore. I haven't spoken to her in two years. I haven't seen an MAM video in probably two and a half years from her. But that's the one thing that sticks out that I really remember is that she just, she was full of circumstantial evidence. She, you know, it made perfect sense to her that like the car, for example, and a lot of people do this, so I'm not bashing her, but like the car, for example, um, she created an entire story that was based on nothing and was totally untrue and unfounded. But the way she spun it, people were like, wow, that makes sense. I'm like, oh my God, that makes no sense. There's nothing to it. So, but again, a lot of people do that. Prisoners are convicted on circumstantial evidence. I'm just not a believer in circumstantial evidence. I want hard proof. Show me scientific facts. Show me, you know, if you're going to connect the dots, then connect it with theory that makes sense. Uh, but that's just me. I am not telling anybody not to watch her. I say go watch her because you'll appreciate those of us that are sane. Um, but seriously, go watch her. Enjoy her. I will never tell anybody not to. Um, just don't bring up her theories to me because they are so preposterous. Um, Ethel, I would love to interview Len. I actually almost called him this afternoon, but he has court again on Monday. He's not going to do an interview while he's still in court. I thought that maybe it was over, but as soon as that trial is over and he gets, you know, whether he's off or gets probation or something, I am definitely going to call him because I think he would be a good interview. And it's true. Guilters have made circumstantial evidence without a doubt. Yeah, Jerome, I'm big on that. Like, you know, I, I can put theories together and I can, you know, guide things together, but it had those connecting the dots has to be based on actual fact. Like I want to connect the dots with fact and, you know, base it on the circumstances that surround that fact, not just create crazy ass stories because that's ludicrous to me. The computer, the day planner. That's in Alley. The, the, don't say all the truth is. I think the day planner is pointless. I don't think it means anything. I have fought with Allie on this, who I love to death, but I fought with her on this. I don't think the day planner means shit. The computer does. That's hands down does. The day planner, I don't think means much. Um... Hey, Len, I'm leaving you a message. Here's my number. I would love to interview once you're convicted. <laughs> hey, if he goes to jail, I'd have a better chance to interview him because then I wouldn't have to pay him. I could just go visit him in jail. Um, Cover this or not. Some real questions were raised in my mind about the Ryan Hill guest involvement, not in the murder, but tampering thoughts. Sully, I have always said from the beginning that I firmly believe that Ryan was involved in the planning of evidence I firmly believe that Ryan had to do with the cover-up. I almost believe that he's the one that found the car on the fourth. That's where the single key came from. A lot of that, my thoughts on that are based on the fact that her camera, um, digital card, the, uh, you know, what holds your picture, memory card, was found in her car, where the camera itself was found in the burn barrel. So my feeling from day one was Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey are not going to be like, let's pull out her memory card and save it for her family. That They're not going to do that. But someone like Ryan, before he plants evidence, is going to do that. Someone like Ryan or her brother or somebody is going to pull out that memory card and be like, all right, we need to burn this, but here's the memory card. Somebody close to her had to pull out that memory card. Brendan and Stephen weren't going to do it. That's why I always said that Ryan was involved in that aspect, but I don't believe Ryan killed her. Um, ben, there was proof. I'm not going through this again. There was proof that Bobby killed her. I mean, that Bobby looked at the computer. He was the only person home at that time. 
Could have been Brenda. Brenda was at school. This was proven by dates and times. Brenda was at school. Um, Chintzy and Neat showing out with video series on how to survive in prison. <laughs> oh, believe me, he won't go to a state prison. He'll go to a nice, cushy federal prison. With how much stuff doesn't make sense in Manitowoc, I'm almost tempted to think LK, LK me, Laura Keck, piss someone off, and they set him up with this BS. Um, no, Lankachinsky, everything that this girl said makes perfect sense, and she sounds for real. And you guys will see that in the video tomorrow. Um, all right, this is some weird. Not a hard fact that Bobby used the computer. Ben, it is a logical fact. That's not circumstantial. If Bobby was home and the computer was accessed and nobody else was home and everybody else was time stamped at work or at school, then some burglar didn't rush into Bobby's house to use his computer to look up porn. That's criminology 101. Logic. Um, episode one, episode two said Padgel said they found the key that started TH's vehicle. That is correct. Does anyone know what was on the card? I don't think we ever found out, Lorraine. We just know it was a memory card, and that fact had always stuck in my mind for the last couple of years. Ben, what proof? It's it's blatant obvious. You know, there's certain things you have to use as reasonable deduction when you're doing criminology. Reasonable deduction is Brendan and all the brothers and Barb and Scott and the ex-husband were all time stamped at work. Somebody accessed the computer. Bobby was the only one home. It's logic criminology 101 that Bobby is the one that used the computer. Do they have a camera of it? No. No. But you don't always have a camera of stuff. You know, if we did, life would be wonderful. But you have to use logic, common sense, and line up. And you have to rule out other possibilities. When you rule out the fact that everyone else was at school or time stamped at work, then the only person it could be is Bobby. That You can't ask for more. Not like Brendan stayed home or somebody was home or somebody was home from school. It's ludicrous to say that. It was Bobby. Someone direct me to prove that Brendan wasn't home. Ask Zellner. Um, Mandy did a great job on the witness stand. That must have been really hard to do. I know. I feel bad for her. I still say she needs... So you remember how I said that last night about sending a hairdresser to Wisconsin? So Carla Chase freaked out, I heard. I'm blocked from her, or she's blocked from me. And so I can't see what she wrote, but a lot of people are writing on Twitter like, Carla, she was probably joking, relax. So I don't know what she said, but I thought it was pretty funny. Um, I'm sure his Bobby email was linked to a few sites. Oh, that's another, that's an excellent point, Shane. Excellent point that maybe Zellner did realize that his email was linked. That's how they knew it was him too. That's a good point. But where does your proof of timestamps? Oh my God, Ben, I'm not, I am not going through this all over again. Um, and search is done even after Brendan was arrested. So again, that's right. Brendan was arrested. There was searches were done. That's correct. Uh, let me back up because I know I missed some questions. Um, all right. RH is in some. Yeah, I got that. Uh, do you know any updates on the case and release date from the UK? There are no updates yet, Shane. And the only update that I have came from my interview with Marty Tankliff who Drizzen and Laura, Brendan's attorneys, had spoken in his law class the day before and said that it's not over for Brendan. Um, there's He's got a lot more to go and that don't give up on him because they're not giving up on him. And they just said that on um, December 4th. So that's the real only update that I have. 
Um, I think the Ryan planted the car and Avery took pictures on the advice, gave it to Pam Stern the day after. Jerome, that's not a bad logic. Um, that's definitely n possible. See, like everyone talks about Ryan's scratches. I personally think Ryan's scratches came from the branches when he was trying to put the branches over the truck, over the RAV4. That's where I think those scratches came from. And I've always said that. Um, like, I think uh, KZ, Zellner, th I hate using initials. I think Zellner thinks that Bobby planted the car, or Scott planted the car. Obviously, she knows more than I do, but I never thought that. I thought Ryan planted the car, and that's where he got all those scratches from. So it's kind of like if you believe that Ryan didn't kill her, but it was part of the cover-up, then my theory makes sense. If you believe that Ryan killed her, then my theory doesn't make sense because then Ryan did way too much. Um, after BD was arrested, search kept going. So it wasn't BD. And it's, in, yeah, it was in Bobby's bedroom as well. There, There's so many things that point to Bobby. But I mean, we've rehashed this over and over and over with Ben. He just keeps bringing it up and doesn't want to listen. Ben, I'm in the UK. The uh, PC is hard proof. Um, like the blood with Steven's DNA. Yeah, that's something I read about tonight, and I can't remember exactly what it was or what I read, but it, I'll go, I'll look back again tomorrow. They started a vehicle while they have to disconnect the drive shaft to tow it. Because Brian, you can't drive a vehicle though. You can't just drive a vehicle, um, you know, to a crime lab. You have to tow it. So that's not a surprise. Um, what do you think about the dent that looks like a bullet hole in the rav in the pick Pam of God took? But it isn't there in the pics that were taken in custody. Marissa, I don't know anything about it. I could sit here and bullshit my way through that question, but I honestly don't know anything about it. I've never seen a bullet hole on the side of the RAV4. Um, I've never noticed a bullet hole and I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, you're welcome, Jerome. He also had our planner out of the car. So that makes sense. Yeah. I'm telling you, I came up with what, what was it, like a month ago that, you know what, maybe just maybe when Colburn found the car, either he was with Ryan or Ryan was following him or something, but that he was with Ryan or Ryan found the car already. And that's the voice you hear in the background that Zellner says it's her car or it's here or whatever it is. Um, makes me wonder if that was Ryan when Colburn called in and Ryan knew where the car was. That's why they had a single key because Ryan went looking for her. Ryan had to start up the car, you know, but the things that don't fit in is the battery. If Ryan had a key and it was running, what happened to the battery? Even if a car was hit, you wouldn't kill the battery like that. So I still don't know what happened to the battery, why they took out the battery. I, I still can't get over this. And I nobody's explained it either. Um... They can unlock the wheels with the key, not have to disconnect the drive shaft. It depends on the car. I don't think, I mean, I don't know anything about a RAV4. I still think Zellner didn't want to point the finger to Ellie for the planning, so Steven's civil suit will go in her favor. I, But you know what, Tracy? I really don't think that the cops planted evidence. I think they got people to plan it for them. <clears throat> I don't think cops are dumb enough to plan evidence. I mean... Maybe little things like let's drop a key, but initially I don't think they planted it. I honestly think that I'm so itchy. I honestly think that it is, um, what you call it, that it was the cops that asked Ryan to do it or something like that. I don't think they did it themselves. Um, Erica's made a video on the bullet hole in the RAV4. I don't ever remember hearing about a bullet hole in the RAV4. I've heard conspiracy theories that, um, and I'm not saying his was, I haven't seen a video, 
but I, I've heard conspiracy theories where there are three different RAV fours, or you know, there's something in the RAV four, or it wasn't her RAV four; it was a different RAV four. I've heard so many theories on it, so I can't say for sure. Um, I haven't looked at the RAV four in two years, two and a half years, almost three years already. I can't believe it's almost three years. So I can't say for sure, but I don't remember ever hearing about a bullet hole other than from some conspiracy theorists that now that I think about it, but that was it. I never gave much thought to it. Um, they had the key that started the vehicle. I just, maybe she had a certain, um, um, a certain kind of lock on it. I don't know, Brian. I really don't. It's definitely not in casino. Ryan seemed to be very in tune with the people investigated. Oh, absolutely, Sully. He was on in the police uh, crime scene like five times. I'm sorry, like he signed in. What ex boyfriend does that? It, there's no way. Do you think TH hit a deer and that's how Bobby seen her because she was on the side of the road? You know, Jason, that's a fucking really good thought that. I've never thought of that. Maybe she did hit a deer. That would explain um, possibly the deer that Bobby supposedly hit on the 4th. Um, it would explain how he caught up to her. That's pretty good. I've, I I want to investigate that more because that's a great thought. And if you guys didn't hear, Jason said maybe TH hit a deer and that's how Bobby seen her. Because she was on the side of the road and everything went from there. It makes perfect sense. Especially if Bobby had a deer. I don't know how long deer's like roadkill will last. If you could bring it in your garage like three days later. Or maybe the deer was in there on the 31st. Or yeah, the deer was in there on the 31st. And Bobby said that it was him that did it. You know, because I don't remember Bobby's truck having any dents or anything in it. That's a really good thought. I'm going to look more into that. And honestly, Jason, I don't think anyone has said that yet. I don't think I've heard anyone say that yet. But it does make sense. Um, Brian, yeah, we talked about hitting a deer before, but not Teresa hitting a deer on the 31st. Um, but he had pictures of TH on the computer and not just the wicked porn. And the bones found wasn't completely hers. That were not confirmed yet, Shane. Police would want to have planted evidence as far from them as possible. I agree with that, Karen. You know, I just have to say to you, I really hope that you don't need a lawyer as good as Elna because then you'd never believe her and you just sit in jail. I'm assuming you're talking to Ben, Linda. Um, I thought Bobby heard about the deer on the police scanner. Um, Lorraine, I don't remember. I honestly don't remember. But even if he did hear it on the police scan, even if he did hear it on the police scanner, could have been a different deer, could have been a deer on the other side. I don't really know. Um, the question is what the real killer now about the detail never revealed to the public. Uh, okay, Brian. So maybe we did. Some people hang deer for a week. Typically, if you hit a deer, especially in a row. But you know what, Lorraine? If he said he heard about it on the police scanner, that could be a blatant lie. That doesn't necessarily mean that he was telling the truth. I mean, that could be a total lie. Um... Zelna knows he's guilty. Zelda knows who's guilty, Avery. Yeah, okay, Ben. That's why she spent like over a million dollars or five hundred thousand dollars so far with experts from around the world and her time and writing 1300 page motions. You're a fucking moron if you think she thinks Avery's guilty. You obviously have no clue what goes into the justice system or what a how much work a lawyer does. Like Brendan Dassey's attorneys. They've already put in well over $1.5 million of their own money and their own time and money that they've lost helping other cases. 
So no, you're wrong. She doesn't know they're guilty and she doesn't believe they're guilty or she wouldn't waste her time. Um, typically, if you hit a deer, especially in a wrap four, there'd be significant damage. Speaking from experience. Yeah, I once hit a deer. I, I know you're right. Uh, many late night, five more midnight minute sessions. I know, right? I was supposed to be done like 30 minutes ago. But if there's some new people here and everybody's talking, so I'll suffer a little longer in the morning. Um, usually I don't work Sundays, but I'm making up hours. Uh, um, good God, where's Fal? Falcon said he wasn't coming tonight. He said he needs a break. How do you... How do they still not know who the balloons belong to? Because I don't think Zellner has been able to test the bones from Teresa. I mean, it's been 12 years. Um, but there's certain things that they won't give. Um, they won't give to uh, Zellner. Like, the car is one of them. Feel sorry. Feel so far. Sorry. Shane, who for Teresa's family? Stephen, a, you didn't write who? I'm assuming T meant Teresa. Um, they usually smash out the headlight. Yo, my ex, my kid's father was coming up here um, last year. And he hit a deer. There was a huge hole in the front of his truck. Like a fucking hole. I was like, what the hell happened to you? He's like, I hit a deer on the way up. So yeah, strange things can happen to trucks. And he has a Silverado. And yeah, there was a huge like hole in it. Um, she don't, she don't. Yeah, that's another thing I want to say. I've, I may have thought it in the beginning, or I may have said something. Zellner doesn't need fame. Zellner has plenty of fame long before this Avery case. She is noted before Avery as one of the best attorneys in the world. She is one of, she's like in the top three of the United States and she's number one for exonerations in the entire world. So to say she needs fame, she don't need fame, nor does she need money. If you look at the settlement she's gotten, I think she had like seven settlements for over $10 million. She gets 33% of that. Trust me, she doesn't need money or fame. Um, she don't, all right, I got there. I'll let you lull me to sleep. Can I, Patty, can I tell them what your brother does? I think he has the greatest job in the world, but I don't want to say anything if you don't want me to. Um, she knows Steven is due a huge payout. She didn't take the case till the documentary. Because maybe she didn't see it. Do you know how many things she gets every single day? Um, how many letters she gets every single day? Every single person in jail will tell you they're innocent. Nobody will tell you they're guilty. Everybody's innocent. Um, so <clears throat> I keep asking Patty if I can ask what a brother does. So I need to know who has kids. Because when I found out who Patty's brother was, I was so excited um, for anyone that has little kids or ever had little kids, her brother does all the voices for the characters in Go Diego Go. So yeah, I think that's like the coolest job. And um, I can't think of the names now because my kids are older. But yeah, her brother does all the voices for Go Diego Go. And I think that's absolutely awesome. The coolest job in the world. So I just had to throw that out there. Um. Let's see. I heard in reports that they were interviewing Brendan and Brian in the back of Ben. You're not going to get banned. Um, Dora the Explorer too. So it's Dora and Diego. Like that is the coolest job ever. Um, sorry, Ben. Someone called. Uh, ben, I told you, you're not getting banned. Uh, anybody, somebody else hit the deer and he just wanted the deer. No one that I can see. 
Um, video games is he and me, Potato Head. He's me and Potato and the Lay's Potato commercials. <laughs> That's awesome. <gasps> uh, ben not get hugged enough. No, Bobby has not been arrested. Bobby will, I don't know if Bobby will ever be arrested, but no, he hasn't been arrested. Uh, Mr. Potato Head. Yeah, Bobby, um, I don't think Bobby's going to get arrested ever. I don't think Zellner is going to try to prove him as the killer I think she's putting it out there, but I don't, she doesn't have to prove it. I don't know if she will prove it unless she absolutely has to. Um, ben, they're not going to, Marissa's not going to boot you. I already told her not to boot you. Yeah, hey, I called you a name, Ben. I said you were a fucking idiot. That was me. Take full responsibility. How with it? Because it, I did. That was me, Ben. Uh, but you know, I love you, Ben. <laughs> I did. I said it. Um, but you can't kick me out of my own room. Uh, all right, Shane. How with that on his computer? Someone's saying that as gross as what's on his computer, it's not illegal. Um, people saying the porn is illegal, but everyone's saying that it's not actually illegal. It's just gross stuff, but nothing he'll go to jail for. Child porn is a minimum of 10 year sentence. But I don't know what's going to happen with it. I honestly don't. What's up, Mama Sid? Um, you can what? Ben, it's freedom of speech. You can say whatever you like. You're not banned. BOD was an adult at the time. He was charged for child porn. Brian, that's what I was thinking about. I While I said it, I'm like, I wonder if you're a child, if you can get in child for child porn, or if you have to be an adult to get involved, to get in trouble for child porn. Yes, Ben, if you don't like your, your response, you can delete your text and nobody can see it but the host. Um, is that not was is that not was found? I don't remember if it was legit child porn or if it was just discussing snuff stuff. And snuff, unfortunately, is not illegal. And I'm not sure if it was accessed on the dark web, if how illegal it was, if it was just Google searches. Jerome, I probably did miss your question. Jason, you watched my old video? Um, let me explain that. Jerome, hold that question because Jason's answer, Jason's question is maybe a little long for the answer. Jason, I did believe it 110% until that video that I made. About a month or two after I made that video, Carmen's brother contacted me and told me that as far as he knew, um, Carmen was, you know, he went to a funeral and everything. And the cops did not pay for anything, which was the rumor that was going around. And the brother really like um, solidified that it's possible that they used it, but the dates were wrong. Like, she was carted away on the 7th or the 8th at like five o'clock in the afternoon or something. Um, and it wasn't, I believe it was a closed casket, but I want to say someone opened it. Like he told me something and I'm like the timing of this. I really don't think that it was totally Carmen's bones. Like they, the mom has her ashes on a uh, fireplace or something. The mom was talking to us too, and he was around for a good while. Like we became friends and stuff, but there were things that he said that made me think that maybe it wasn't Carmen's bones, 
So before I made that video, I had no contact with him at all. Didn't even know he existed. But then he literally contacted me like about a month or two after I made the video telling me who he was. And I made him show me his ID and pictures and everything to prove that it really was his sister. And he did. So I knew it was really him. Um... I think the porn found on his computer is distasteful. It is well within his rights to look at it. That being said, I'm still a believer in him being involved. Oh, I've always said he was the killer. I still think he's the killer. What? Why do you need a coat? Xbox, Xbox app. Go to bed. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. No, go to bed. No, go to bed. My son's trying to get Xbox codes at 2 o'clock in the morning. Go to bed. No. Love you. Not tired. I'm sorry about that. It's two o'clock in the morning. He's like still playing Xbox. I don't know what he's doing, but he's trying to get another code for it. He's 11. Um. All right. Now, Jerome, you had a question. I know, right, Sully? My other, my twins are out. They're at a friend's houses. So it's just me and him, but he's hooked on Fortnite. Hooked. Or GTA 5. I don't know what he's playing. One of them. Um, Jerome, what was your question? Lego Toy, we were playing Xbox and listening to you. Oh, you're playing with him, Lego? Are you playing GTA 5? I'm here in Sweden. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. It's 2.02 a.m. here. No, he doesn't play Minecraft. Two in Minnesota. Same here, Linda. Two o'clock here. Though I love that you have no filter. I don't have a filter. <laughs> I do on interviews, though. I'm 1702 in Japan. My question was, I don't know U.S. law. Why Zelda don't ask for help in FIB or, or FBI or CIA to help her? I'm... Jerome, I couldn't tell you why, but I, I'm assuming there's a reason. Um, the FBI was supposedly already involved, um, but I don't think she trusts the FBI, and I don't think the CIA would do anything. Um, whiskey and YouTube for me, 202. Yeah, it's cold and rainy in, in uh, where I am, too. I'm in northern Alabama, and it's freezing. Toronto Mike three here. So that's two from Canada. Brian, it's Sunday. It is Sunday. 2 a.m. Um, three here in Ontario. Oh, we got a few from Canada, Marissa. Lots of Canadians. I'm glad I said I was going 20 minutes. We're now on an hour and 20 minutes. Hour and 15. Uh, almost Monday, 9 a.m. Yeah, so you guys are like bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. At 9 a.m.? I can't believe it's 2 o'clock. I got to be up soon. Love the hair. You like my hair tonight? Dude, I didn't even take a shower tonight. I've been in my jammies all day. I'm just cold. Um, Bobby Curran for the big guys. Ah, uh, thanks, Suzanne. I don't even have makeup on. I can't believe you guys like my hair. It's so messy. Um, very 90s, exactly. <laughs> I wake up with you a lot. Thanks, Jerome. That's always a good thing. Whoops. I almost stepped on fluff and nut of butter. Um, waking up with me is good. What's the matter, Fluffy? 
He's mad because I just kicked him. Do you think it's possible a police officer murder? I don't. Um, I mean, I'm not going to say it's not possible. Do I think it's most likely? No. There is very weird office who I believe has been fired over something. Um, I'm not going to say that it's not possible, but I don't think so. And that's not because I believe in cops and stuff, because I think Manitowoc is like the most corrupt fucking police I've ever seen in my entire life. So I'm not saying it's not possible, but I I don't think it's highly likely. Um, love it, own a girl. That's what I love. People who are accountable. Because <laughs> I said I didn't take a shower today. <laughs> it's like, it's just ducky. But that's the thing about being a girl. You could throw on a jacket, you could throw on a pair of earrings, you could throw on some lipstick, and all of a sudden you look alive again, even if you've been dead all day. Wisconsin DOJ, and I'm glad I didn't get it. Ah. Yeah, it was, but you know what? I would, I want to say that all of Wisconsin isn't corrupt, but I'm starting to think all of Wisconsin is corrupt and hopefully it will change. I know fun. There has been, that's what I'm saying. I don't, just the circumstances that are surrounding this. Um, I don't think it is, but you never know. I mean, maybe Kasorik told somebody to kill her. I don't know. You know, there's so many possibilities of what it could be. And honestly, I can come up with some crazy ass stories or crazy ass theories, but they won't have any backing to it. Like I, in a like crossing thought, I could say the Kasorik, the uh, DOJ that was at Auto Trader, um, I don't believe was there for Steven, but because she was there, Maybe she's the one that made the phone call. Maybe she's the one that told Teresa to go to Avery's. Maybe she's the one that made the star 67 and, you know, went back to Avery's, told her to go back to Avery's. I mean, there's so many, I can come up with so many circumstantial stories, but I won't do it. Um, I do play games, Jerome, but I built my computer on PC. And I am seven years older than you, Jerome. But yeah, I play games. Um, but was Steve a do millions from the county? But nobody knows if he would have won or not. I mean, he obviously would have won, but nobody knew for how much. Um, so maybe it's big, big that what we think. Like I said, I'm not saying it's not possible, but in using the circumstances surrounding, and it's not like, you know, this was Beverly Hills where crimes don't happen. People go missing and get killed in Manitowoc all the time. <clears throat> Last question, I'll leave you alone. The phone records, you still, Kratz, type them up. I, I still think those phone records are fake. Um, To go by that, if you... Go to um, Scott Peterson trial. And I worked for AT&T. So that's like if she had another phone provider or if they were different phone records, I wouldn't know so much. I mean, granted, I had Verizon as my personal one, but I wouldn't know so much. But I was an AT&T manager for many years. Those phone records were fake as fuck. Those phone records were phone records that you pull up like from your cell phone, you know, like that you print out they were not pure records they the people that he had in were bullshit people that part i still stick with and i still believe that um thank you jerome have you looked into day but go to club allegations to connect peterson calma dots i have toronto and i've always disagreed with dave on this that whether they're Masons or anything like that, to me, the whole corruption has nothing to do with Masons. The whole corruption has to do with there's a puppet master and somebody pulling the strings. Oma, let me compare it to the mafia. All right, Coming from New York, growing up in the 80s and the 70s, the mob was really big, especially in Queens where I lived. 
and until we moved out to Long Island. But the, you know, you had the Godfather. It didn't matter what strip club they owned or what club they owned. The fact of the matter is, you didn't disrespect them for who they were or what they were going to do to you. Had nothing to do with how many companies they owned or which bar they owned or which strip club they owned. That's not why you didn't disrespect them. That's the best way I can put it into perspective. Why I don't think the Knights of Columbus or the Masons or anything like that really is the core of it. The real core of it is that, um, that the, the, he was like the head honcho and you weren't going to disrespect the chief of police. That's how I see it. Um, Suzanne, I probably did. Um, you missed my comment. Um, you can't underestimate secret societies. I'm not saying that I'm underestimating them. I'm just saying that, like, think of the Sopranos. Sopranos had Bada Bing, okay? And if you didn't watch Sopranos, you're not going to know what I'm talking about. But the actual club meant nothing. Just because they had meetings in the club doesn't mean that, you know, that was the core importance of who they were. You know, who they were and the image that they protect, that's what was most important, not what club they hung out in. So I, I don't know how else I can say it. Want to be sex ring? I doubt it. Fluffy would burn. Don't be picking up fluff and nut butter. That's immediate dismissal. You pick on my fluff and nut butter. Um, I think the kill was ordered at the moment. I'm. It's possible. I'm not going to rule it out. Uh, something happened and I got disconnected. Not sure if you answered my previous question. I believe I did, Sully. Uh, let me back up and see. Uh, oh, not to break the rhythm, but do you look into other cases? I also follow Adnan Snide case uh, from the Serial Podcast. I do break into other cases. If you, I don't know how new you are to me, but... Um, I just did an interview with Marty Tankliff um, a couple of days ago. You can catch it on YouTube on my channel. Um, I am trying to do more interviews and get into other cases and interview more people like that. Like I'm not trying to solve other cases, but I want to run the channel towards the direction of doing interviews with uh, people in other cases. <clears throat> um, thank you, Deb. Heard something about Ellie reporting essay as a murder suspect. That is very true, Suzanne. Um, on November 3rd, and I have a video for all you guys that are new, you're gonna I sound like an Apple commercial when I say there's an app for that, but I have a video for that. Um in 2016, Stephen Avery was not only was her car in police custody on November 3rd. And it's written in there. Like there's a report of this. Stephen Avery wow. was listed as a homicide suspect be like before they ever found a bone, before they ever found anything. I want to say it was on the fourth that they did this, but I can't say for sure exactly. Um, but I'm pretty sure it was on the fourth that they said he was a homicide suspect or the ninth. I think it was the ninth that had to be that he was a homicide suspect. They, they never even charged him, but he was a homicide suspect long before they ever charged him. Um, thank you, Sully. Yeah. I have a lot of information <laughs> from two years ago, pre Zellner. Um, just don't laugh at my hair. I've changed my hair many times over the years. Um, but yeah, uh, Martin Tankliff was my first, like, he was my first interview outside of making a murderer. I knew him from when we were young. If you don't know the case, check out his case. He's got a phenomenal story. Um, and that's the direction that I'm trying to go into is um, interviews and, you know, meeting more people and discussing, and I don't curse on interviews, but um, meeting more people that really make a difference or that are influential in a case, not just, you know, Joe Schmo is a lawyer for a case, you know, like more people like Marty and, you know, that kind of direction. 
Um, after reading Wrecking Crew, I also have an interview with John Farrick that I did that ended up going like two and a half hours. He was phenomenal. That was last week. <clears throat> After Reku and all the oops, I ran over someone. I just thought, what if an officer accidentally hits CH and then a light bulb moment? Let's frame. I don't know. I, I just, something about the cops killing her just doesn't make sense to me. I don't know why. I could be totally wrong. Um, There's just something in my gut tells me the cops did not kill her. Dude crush. What's a dude crush? Um, I got long hair too, Laura. I've changed 10,000 times styles. I understand you. I did. I've had crazy styles. Hope it doesn't teeter on over into Minnesota. This Wisconsin corruption. I mean, honestly, Linda, though, it's... You know, I've said this before. I'm going to keep saying it until I'm blue in the face. Corruption is not common. I know it seems common if you look at certain states or certain, you know, cities, but it's not as common as people think it is. And what, you know, what the cops do, they do get it right 95 to 96% of the time. Um, their tactics works. It, it's not corrupt. They do it right. So, you know, I I don't want to bash a whole system because it's really not that bad. We just focus on that 5% that get it wrong. Like an article, you want to hear something crazy? An article that I saw today that I posted in a uh, true crime room. There was a cop in Florida who just got sentenced to three years in prison because he was trying to racially uh, set up where the whole sit, the whole precinct goes after black people or sets up black people. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with these people? And I think he was like Spanish. But yeah, that just came out like today that he got three years. Um, Joseph, why are you retracting your comments? Steve had been paid out. The police jobs would have been cut. Oh, absolutely. Was TH sick? No, she wasn't sick. She didn't have any disease. Manitowoc thought they had Avery the first time. Then the lawsuit, so much money. It's exactly right. Discussing all this is a very open forum. Really allows you to see the constraints of the investigation. I'm sure many avenues get pushed to the side because they do not fit the desired narrative. Absolutely, Sully. 100% agree with that. I am drinking... Um, Nothing good. Um, Kool-Aid. Not Kool-Aid, but sugar-free Kool-Aid. I drink it all the time. Um, ben, he can obviously see you because he said hi. If SA would have been paid, MCO would have been shut down. No, they just would have lost their pensions. It's been real good. I love your stuff. I keep watching, but I got to go to bed. I got to go to bed, too. I'm chilling up in this mother. I think Iracos is drunk. Sugar-free Kool-Aid. That's like a waterless shower. No, I drink it all the time. You know, the little water packets. The ones that you put on the packet. Belgian beer. That's why I don't like beer. I never liked beer. Beer has never been. My, I drink uh, Grey Goose uh, Dirty Martinis. That's my drink. And wine sometimes. Me and Ericos have magic turtle powers. I do. I think Ericos is drunk. I'm going to take a wild guess. Scotch. That's a hardcore drink. Hardcore. Uh, but guys, I'm going to give us 10 more minutes. I literally have to be up at 7. I got to be at work at 7, so which means I got to be up at like 640. I work from home, so I don't have to drive anywhere. Um, that scotch, that man has taste buds of stone. I agree. Hi, Missy, Missy. Um, I 
Have a nice nap, exactly. But that's a good thing about working from home, though. I kind of just, like, roll out of bed. MCO has a staff of eight. 36 million. Oh, they would have all lost their pensions and everything. They would have been screwed. Big time screwed. I uh, Iricos has a premiere in the morning. Iricos, what time? It's much to lose to Avery. I agree. Ericos, we need a time. Nine, so 12 o'clock Eastern, 11 o'clock Pacific, and 9 o'clock uh, Pacific. Uh, 10 o'clock Mountain, 11 o'clock Central, and 12 o'clock Eastern. Uh, so the motive is high, so it take one office who is scared of his or her pension. I'm telling you, Shane, Kasorik is the puppet master. Kasorik is the one that tied, that pulled the strings for everybody else. I'm telling you, it was Kasorik. I guarantee it. It's going to come out. He covered up too many different things. And now to find out that he may be the one that killed Ricky Hosletter just only triple confirms what I've been saying about him. He was Captain Hook. Exactly. Um, 8.30 a.m. UK. Or oh, tomorrow at 9 is 8.30 a.m. So for the newbies, I, do a, I definitely do a live show every Friday night at 9 <clears throat> Central Time. That's like set in stone. We call it like PJ party on Fridays. So that one, I'm here always. Sometimes I'll do a live on Saturday. Sometimes I'll do one during the week, but it's hard. I got three kids uh, plus work, uh, but I'll do premieres here and there. But Friday at night, Friday night at nine or eight, I'll change the dates, the time sometimes, but it's, it's definitively always Friday night. Uh, Joe, good luck. You'll nobody's been able to find pictures of them other than, you know, what's online. Yeah, it all started out. So yeah, I wasn't going to do lives and I'm like, I'm so bored. I'm a single mom of three and I really don't go out at night. So I'm like, you know what? I need to do something. So I started doing lives on Friday and became whoever sits home on Fridays with me is awesome. Bye, Deb. Yeah, but stay on Kasorik. I am going to stay on Kasorik. I've been on Kasorik for about two weeks already. I know, right, Jerome? I don't have time for a boyfriend. <clears throat> Missy, you have to watch the video. But uh, to wrap it up real quickly, for anyone that came in late, good night, Linda. For anyone that came in late, the catch is the big bombshell is and i'm gonna change the title on the video now that i know that nobody knows it is that um it's been rumored and said that whoever killed rocky ricky hosletter was um what you'll call it was uh herman or herman's brother and no it was kasorik kasorik's sister confirmed by his sister's husband it says that Kasorik is the one that killed Hasletter. And that's why it was a big cover up. That's what the corruption. I mean, there's tons of corruption, but that's what the bombshell was. Now, it's not 2 a.m. in Australia. It's they're 24 hours ahead. They would be two o'clock in the afternoon. Bye, Sully. See you soon. She didn't overdose. She only smoked pot. There are 15 hours. I think it depends what part of Australia. But either way, if it's 2 o'clock in the morning here, it's not going to be 2 o'clock in the morning there. UK is 6 hours ahead. So Phoebe should be getting up soon. Poor Phoebe. She was up all night last night. Later, Brian.
Um, anyone else have any more questions? I have an 11 year old who's still screaming at Fortnite or a GTA five who needs to get his ass to bed. And I need to get my ass to bed. Anyone have anything else? Going once, going twice. You have a question? Go for it, Missy. What's shameful? <laughs> Why are you so cute? Um, I don't know. You can go to sleep, Laura. Your cool mom letting them stay up. Yeah. That's because I'm doing a video, so he thinks he could take advantage of it. Like a typical gamer. This kid plays all the time. All the time. But he gets great grades, so I can't say anything. As long as he keeps his grades up. Thanks, Jerome. And I love you guys, too. Because if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't make videos. Because I stopped for a year. I started in the... Begin end of 2015, and then I stopped. I stopped for over a year for a bunch of different reasons. Night, Wendy, Wendra. When Stephen Avery's verdict is overturned, you shall. Thanks, Kaylee. Love you, and thank you for loving my videos. Um... All right, guys, have a wonderful night, and I will see you guys. I'm not going to do a live tomorrow. Um, I actually, you know what? I probably will do the live tomorrow because I'll do a premiere for the rest of uh, Kaczynski's trial, and then I will do another video on Monday because he's back in court for trial. So the next couple of days, I'm going to cover Kaczynski and the trial and stuff. So you guys will get a bunch of premieres out just in case you're not following the trial in case you have any questions. So with that said, I will see you guys tomorrow night. Bye, Marissa. Thanks, guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow.